Um, can I just say, uh, thank you very much. No, it's really rare that you get a chance to sit in a room, well, in front of people, um, and actually listen to that. I mean, that, that, that doesn't happen every day, and there's so much you can take from that, but I think the overall message is clear. We are revolutionaries in this room, and if you don't see yourself in that way, you better had start seeing yourself that way pretty quickly because you're the only people doing the job, right? So at the moment, you're in your organizations, and look, all right, don't tweet this, but is there anyone in this room who has a chief executive that just doesn't get it? <laughs> okay, I get why you're not bringing your hands up. <laughs> All right, well, we're in a great situation, guys, because every chief executive in this room gets it. Um, look, it's our job to educate, and sometimes that can uh, straddle the line between uh, good and dangerous, right? But who else is going to do it if you don't do it? I mean, you're the people. You're, I asked you at the beginning of the session, are you digital experts? Are you the people who deliver digital service? And most of you put your hand up and said yes, you know? And if that is the case then you do have a huge degree of power to instigate change. And it could either be by suggestion or by persuasion or just damn right forthright, take this book, buy it, leave it on your CEO's desk, and inside it, put a load of people's names and a tick next to it and put his or her name at the bottom with no tick next to it and see if they take it home and read the damn thing. It's even got big print. <laughs> It's available on Amazon, it's less than a tenner. There's three more copies here. Who's read this already? Oh, look, you people, fantastic. Um, is Rob here from Stoke? Where's Rob from Stoke? Come here, sir. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Stop being shy, you're in a room full of friends. Come on. Can you break dance? <laughs> you were the first person to donate to Cancer Research. Thank you very much, that's yours. Give it to your chief exec after you've read it. Do the name thing, it really works. It shames them into actually reading something for once. Um, right, so it's a real shame that Simon Fletcher couldn't be here. He's the chief executive of Litchfield District Council. I've admired and been friends with Simon for a long time since I met him at the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. He really invested in us and saw something innovative and different. And then he went off and worked in the private sector, came back and became um, uh, chief executive of Litchfield District. And the programme of change that he is making is phenomenal, and he's assembled phenomenal people to be able to do, the, to do that job. And there's some people from, some of those phenomenal people in this room now, really looking forward to seeing what this amazing council is gonna do. Not only did they become, over the last sort of four or five years, the go-to case study for how to digitize super fast. I think when they first did group garden waste, while most local authorities were just thinking about it, they just went ahead and delivered it and made, what is it, 1.2 million pounds in 12 months or something in revenues. Uh, which then justified the digitization of the whole organization. And of course, then a couple of smart people in customer services just went off and built stuff using their low-code platform. And before you know it, there's digital services now coming out of their ears. And what they've got to now do is look back, start iterating, and start modernizing again. So it's a constant um, case of maintenance. So first of all, I'd like to welcome a few new organizations. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tell you the story of these. I'd love to, but time just doesn't permit. But you will see what happens. This went live, I want to say, two days ago. Uh, it's the uh, Hertfordshire Integrated Care Trust. It's the beginning of change of digital in the NHS. At the basic level, we launched the new um, websites for the new Integrated Care Trust. And then their vision, their strategy, their plan is to use uh, galaxies inside their Jardu platform to deploy a website for every GP surgery in Hertfordshire, standardizing every single GP surgery so there is a basic, accessible, WCAG, AA compliant website that anyone can go to, and you will know where to go because the themes and the standard template is basically the same as every other doctor's surgery. It doesn't matter where you move in Hertfordshire, you'll go to your local GP service simply by using Google, you'll find it, and that's because of standardization amazing, remarkable, and very brave decision that they made, and we delivered it in with them, mainly with them, mainly with them working in about two and a half months. It was tremendous. Um, West North Hans are here today. We're going to hear from them shortly. Amazing story of digitization. 
um, standardizing on Jardi platform. We'll come back to that later. And then a University of Columbia or Columbia University in the USA, they're using Jada as a portal for accounts payable to basically automate the process of suppliers constantly interacting with them. They just wanted a, a place that says, look, if you're going to phone us up and ask us for invoices, then just go to our portal. And that is powered by Jada. It integrates with all their back office system. And then we've also got Folkestone and Hive here. So Andrea, if you just wave your hand. Hello. <laughs> um, just onboarded. Ready to learn from everyone here, I'm sure. So exciting. So I'm going to tell you about three things. Um, and then uh, we're going to wrap up. And then everyone, if you just leave the room, we can fumigate and ventilate and refresh things and put little gifts for you on the tables and stuff. So if you don't mind. But just before we all sort of have a break, uh, just three things that I want to tell you about. And I'll do that in the fastest possible time frame. Uh, I'd like to tell you a bit about our brand. And look, no one really cares about what Jardu's logo looks like, except probably me and everyone who works at Jardu, right? <laughs> uh, but I'm going to tell you about it, and it's going to take me at least 25 minutes. Um, we're going to tell about product, because you probably do care about that. And there's some fairly significant changes that we're planning to make. And we'd like to start off by telling you about what the first big change will be. And it's all about standardization, and it's all about uh, connecting with our communities and making sure we're delivering the right services and we're trying to make that less complicated. And then finally, we want to talk about strategy. This is a strategy for you in able to, create, to be able to create sustainability in the teams that you have. So when you're integrating and automating, which is really, the, I suppose, the theme of today, but it is really going to be the story of the next three or five years, you know, the most basic level of artificial intelligence, which is what Mark said this morning. Uh, automation will deliver you real-time service delivery, which is what customers want. And then you've got to take a hop, skip, and a jump to predictive service, where actually you're looking at your city or your district, and you're trying to predict where the problems are going to occur before they actually happen. And that's why we're working with Brightly's uh, Confirm Asset Management System, because that gives us the ability to deeply integrate, pull out data, redisplay it either on a map or somewhere else, and show everybody what is happening in the district, or even using IoT devices, sense when there's a block gully, so you don't have to wait for Mrs. Miggins to report it. So it's all that kind of smart tech that really is backroom stuff, stuff that you should be able to configure, configure, go, and then within a, the end, by the end of the day, you should have just been able to deliver that. And that, that is the responsibility of every vendor in our marketplace, to create standards, to adopt standards, to use those standards, and really to provide that. And that summarizes what the strategy is. Um, so in 2001, we created Jardu, and it was called Jardu Express. Our logo was a coffee cup, because you could just add hot water, and suddenly you'd have digital service, like you could drink and caffeine and you know all that stuff. Instant coffee, instant e-business, that's what we called it. Um, and that was the first, I suppose, version of our software, Jardu Express. And then sort of we grew up a little bit and thought, actually, it would best be a little bit grown up, or at least pretend to be grown up. And we launched Jardu Universe. And that was the first platform we ever made. It was like, OK, we're going to standardize everything. There's loads of bits and pieces that you can chuck in. But we want everyone using the same software. And that's what happened with Universe. And then finally, uh, sort of 2015-ish, we launched Jardu Continuum, which removed massive upgrades. So since then, we haven't charged a customer for a massive upgrade where you would have to do all of this work and basically re-implement the whole damn thing. And so continuous delivery, even though it's painful, has, taken, has spread the pain over time rather than having these big chunks of pain every few years. So we've, we're trying to keep people modernized and moving forward faster. And Jardu now is enormous. It's got millions of lines of code with it, and it's extremely complicated. And we have to keep that code maintained and secure and everything else that you need to do to service uh, the technology. And it's constantly being modernized.
Connecting communities, that's our new positioning statement. And I suppose that's what really does summarize what Jadu does. So yeah, I mean, we're upgrading our brand. You don't really care about that stuff. But I mean, for us, it's that positioning statement. It's that tagline. It's the mission that we're now on to connect people with service, to connect people with assets, to connect people with your organizations so it can happen in real time in the most frictionless way we can. And we're working really hard to make sure we, we are responsible and create good products for you to be able to use to do that. So I'm going to ask Andy Perkins. Yes! You're not going to use the clicker now, are you? I'm not. The no. whole Steve Jobs thing is wasted. Andy didn't know that was happening. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for that intro, Suraj. <laughs> But um, just as a bit of a, a, a recap then, so we've got the, the four main products up there on the screen as you know them today. Um, obviously, they've all got those abbreviations. You, you'll all know CMS, XFP and CXM well because you're pretty much all uh, users of those products. But you probably lesser know the, the CP one there, Content Portal. That's something that was born from uh, a partnership with a, a company back in the day called um, Perceptive Software. Uh, through acquisition, they're now Highland Software. Uh, they have a few document management systems uh, under their uh, ownership. Uh, they've got Perceptive uh, Content, they've got um, Highland OnBase, and they've also got Afresco. Uh, and basically, we've got uh, an integration with those uh, free, uh, those document management systems there um, as part of that product. And um, I suppose um, there are a few other supporting products that aren't on that, that list there. Um, we've got HubIS and Deployer, but we're just focusing on these four uh, for the moment. So what's um, going on as, as, as part of uh, the whole rebrand and the rationalization um, of the products is we're actually merging um, those four products down to two products. Um, so the, the functionality is all still retained, but we're effectively, as part of this, giving them new identities. And I'll go through some of that uh, rationale for you now. Um, so this is really one of the uh, announcements uh, from today. Um, so the multi-tenant SaaS um, CRM product that you, you know as CXM today, um, it's unchanged in functionality, but that's got the new name of Connect. Um, and this is really um, moving away from, uh, I suppose, the, the technology sector that the product sat within as CXM and customer experience management. I can't tell you how many conversations we had where uh, customers or prospects or partners, um, they would refer to it as um, CMX or in some cases BMX, um, <laughs> which, was, uh, which was quite funny. Um, so yeah, we've kind of, um, we're looking at just giving it the name about actually what's its purpose to connect, to connect uh, customers and organizations with you, your teams, digital service delivery, um, automations and integrations. So really, um, that's where that, that product name has been born from. And then Jardu Central there, that's the merging of what you previously known as the CMS, the XFP uh, forms product, and the content portal product, all under one central name. So all of that functionality is still retained, um, but it's all now in, in one central uh, system. And this will be available to uh, patch um, for anyone who's already on the equivalent CMS 21 uh, from August moving forwards. Um, and we're, we'll be speaking with anyone who's interested in being part of our early adopters program for that. And the Connect product there will actually um, will be making that change because that's SaaS uh, over the, the coming weeks. Um, so that will be um, something that you see uh, in pretty soon. So in terms of like, you know, um, why are we doing that? Um, in many ways, this is just um, listening to some of the um, issues that customers may have had um, and uh, around listening to some of that feedback and allowing us uh, as a Jardu team and as you, the customer, 
and as our partners to be able to streamline the delivery, the deployment, um, the management of these products moving forward. So, um, and, and don't worry, the, the Hub IS products, deployer products, they're all uh, maintained, they're progressing forward as well, and they've been changed just to adapt to those kind of new product names and new deployment uh, mechanisms. So in terms of a sneak peek um, at what they look like, what you're seeing here on the screen now is the central product and the new branding uh, having signed into the page. Uh, so we're just on the, on the splash page here. Um, and for some of you in the room, we did give early beta access um, to, a, to a play um, demo site. Uh, we've got some feedback from that in a moment. So some of you have seen, seen this uh, already. Uh, but if not, that's what we're talking about with the central product. And even those of you that have access to the play.jardu uh, uh, demo site won't have seen actually connect in, in context to that because um, we haven't actually uh, pushed that out yet there. So here you can see it on the screen, uh, the two uh, products now side by side with their um, menus expanded so you can see how that generally uh, looks. Now there's actually a section um, just before lunch from my colleague uh, Paul Stanton uh, at the back there, who's actually going to go into the new user interface, the rationale behind some of the changes and what it generally looks like. Um, so there'll be a more in-depth session there uh, around that. So I won't give too, any, too many spoilers away uh, in that regard. But just on some of the, um, I suppose, the, the feedback and the quotes that we've had, I'll just bring some of these up on the screen um, whilst I talk. Um, so I thought it'd be useful just to, to cover some of these. Uh, I mean, some of the highlights from me, um, uh, particular sections have been called out from a couple of the customers around, you know, downloads and how that's been improved. Um, changes, um, you know, what a change, wow, I particularly like that one. But then, of course, my favourite has to be from Birmingham City Council. Simon there at the bottom uh, with my personal favourite of Fab... What is it? Fabstick McTabstick. And I really think we need to get some uh, T-shirts made up uh, with that written on the back of it, because I think that'd be amazing. Um, so yeah, it's been generally positive feedback that we've, we've had so far uh, about the new uh, user interface. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, as I say, we'll, we'll see some more on that uh, a bit later. Um, just another announcement, really, uh, from from today, and again, this is going to be covered in much more detail uh, in the product section later on. Um, but we've uh, we want to give you a preview um, of some of proof of the concept work that we've been doing uh, in the product teams. Um, you'll be aware that we've had some uh, user interviews um, with you to listen to, again to some of the pain points um, and try and reflect on that and how we can make your lives better in using the products uh, and the platform. So as part of that, um, we heard uh, around some of the kind of duplication of effort around when you're creating forms and case types. Uh, and what we've come up with is this, this concept of smart mappings to, to try and streamline that, streamline that process for you when you're managing your content and your services. Um, so we really hope that this change will, will make life easier for you. But the just to give a very sneak peek, um, so the typical workflow when, when building out services is you build the case type first, you then go and build an online form, uh, and then you go and map the two together uh, manually uh, in the background. And there's, there's duplication of effort effectively there. And what we're looking at here, uh, as you can see on the screen, is allowing users to uh, create that central form and those central form questions off the back of an existing connect uh, case type and the case fields that you already have set up within that case type. So um, as it does this, it will try and predict the best form questions to use within the form based upon the case type settings, um, uh, the case fields. Uh, and then basically also, because you've used those uh, case type fields when you're building your form, automatically map then the creation of a case off the back of that as well. So this is really about just streamlining that process of building your content and your services. 
Um, so Andy Green has got a section in the, in the product uh, section a bit later on where he'll actually give you a bit of a, a demo walkthrough on a video uh, of, of that in action. Um, and there's some other great and exciting new things uh, that we've been working with uh, our partners on in regards to some of the integrations we've done. So uh, heads up for the, the lightning talks on those as well. And with that, I'm Thanks sorry, sir, I haven't got a, a whizzy slide for you that like you give me. But, uh, That's what 20 years of working together side by side gets you, Andy. Um, thanks, thanks, Andy. Thank you for the product teams. I mean, that smart mapping stuff is really, uh, if you're building forms and building service, digital services in Jardu, that solves a really big problem. Um, so it's not uh, ready to release yet. As Andy says, it's kind of concept car, but it's um, rolling out. We're going to roll it out sort of um, hopefully this year, maybe early next year. But um, we're going to be ready for beta testing as soon as we can, and we'll involve customers in that process too. Just like we now involve customers in all of our new product development. As you can see in the new redesign of the Jardu platform, it's rationalization into just two products from four. Uh, we've involved customers, select customers through that process as well. So it's great. So finally, um, on strategy, uh, we've, with, the, with the help of six local authorities, including Birmingham, uh, Braintree, Cherwell, Litchfield, West Northampton, Wigan, we've created, a, I suppose, a collection of stories and uh, what we call a flywheel which uh, is the essence of, um, I suppose, it's a culture flywheel. So it's how you create sustainable automated services inside a local authority. But I think I just want to highlight one problem that has now become so pronounced that it actually risks everything we're trying to do. And it's about people, you know, so it's not about tools because there is a plethora of low code, no code. Everyone wants to be something that doesn't involve code. And, you, you know, you can buy these products and you can spend your time building them. You can buy AI bots off the shelf, you can buy chat bots, you can make them, you can do all of that stuff. But let's not forget, you're gonna to have to maintain it. Whatever you create will create technical debt and that requires people and that is a big problem right now. So for example, um, you, I mean, if you try to hire a developer right now, try and hire a developer right now, it will cost you five times not just in salary, but in recruitment costs and the time it will take you to find that person because no one is on the market right now. They're all being hired or being headhunted by companies like us. You know, we're offering premium salaries to those people. I say we, I don't mean just Jada. I mean every Google, Microsoft and everyone. It's a scarce resource that everyone is after. Um, so, so this isn't a cure, but it is a way to sustain. It is a way to retain, recruit, retain and sustain that talent. Um, and it's, it's, worth, it's worth a look because it's driven out of some of the stories that we've been told by uh, other organizations, other local authorities who had that challenge. I mean, waved at, so I'm going to start talking faster. Um, every company on the planet is trying to hire those resources right now. And if you look on Twitter and you just follow some of the more, I suppose, leading people in digital, um, this is Emma McGowan. She's saying, is anyone else having trouble hiring? And then immediately somebody, we should talk. We've been recruiting for a year. Yep, and then this is Sam Hall, who's the Chief Digital Officer for Wales, saying tough is an understatement. Yeah, so if you're thinking about energizing your digital and going off and bringing in contractors and you know sticking post-it notes up like there was no tomorrow, think about delivery. And then once you're thinking about delivery, think about maintainability. You've got to maintain what you build. It doesn't matter what you build it in, what, whether it's Jardu or Out Systems or God knows what else you know that you uh, care to buy. You're going to have to think about how you maintain that. But having said that, a sort of slight kind of challenge that uh, everyone is going to be having or had, has already had. I mean, Jardi is recruiting all around the world, by the way, now, folks. We're a 100% remote business. Don't really have any bricks and mortar anymore. I've got a little office near the Space Center, but that's it. Um, and we're hiring all around the world. We're using a company called remote.com to help us do it because we just can't find the people in the UK anymore. We're hiring everywhere. Um, but automation gives you an opportunity. Um, it means that you don't have to have as many developers. And uh, low-code tools mean that you, know, you, can, you can configure things and create things in a non-technical uh, way. That means that as long as you maintain them, document them, and have someone looking after it, actually, it is the way to fly. You know, and you think about automation in the real sense, 
I mean, I don't know how many of you eat at McDonald's or if you've even seen the story of McDonald's, but the story of McDonald's is automation. It's automation of assembling a burger in the shortest possible time frame and delivering it to the customer. So it stays delicious and you want, you know, you want more. And the same goes with warehouses, you know, completely automated. You've got AWS as probably one of the largest automation companies on the planet. You know, they've built entire frameworks for you to be able to automate. Um, so automation is definitely the way to fly. And the way you need to really sustain your teams is by creating something simple, like a flywheel. We call it a culture flywheel. And it's really about, if I hire these smart people and bring in these tools, how am I going to keep them, keep them engaged and keep wanting to stay? Because they're going to be offered bigger salaries to go elsewhere. And you know, how many local authorities are now having their people poached by you know, technology companies? It's happening every day, all the time. Um, you're probably doing it already. But let's redefine team. Let's not think of it as people. Let's think of it people plus tools, okay? So you've got your team, you've got your business analysts. So it's a set of skills that you have. Some experts in some areas that come in and fly out and you bring them in on the organization. You've got your digital services manager, your web manager. You've got anyone who configures and builds forms. You've got people who work with uh, users, you know, line of business applications as well, because that's critically important, because as much as we like to throw it all away and start again, with, you know, with everything open standards, that's not the reality of it. Um, the change starts start somewhere, and that's why you, there's a whole room of revolutionaries in here, but um, those line of business applications are critical. And then you've got uh, low-code platforms coming in, you know, from left, right, and center being procured here, papers are being written, proof of concepts are being made, things are being purchased. Team is people plus skills plus uh, apps. And then you've got these automations. That's something else, okay? So you've got, um, well, there's business analysis, which is part of the process of automation. You can't automate something unless you know what you're about to automate, can you? Because otherwise you could just unleash hell, couldn't you? Um, you've got RPA, which is now going through a bit of a revolution. Screen scrapers have become cool again. Uh, you've got APIs. Everyone's talking about APIs and now they're kind of everywhere. You've got webhooks, which is, like a better version of an API, I suppose. You know, cleaner, more sanitized, you know, better way of uh, pulling data out. And you've got rules, business rules, applications that are based on creating business rules, like CXM. Is, CXM is a business rules automation system. It's a way you just say, if this, then that. You know? And then you've got users, and this is why we're doing it, right? So you've got this drumbeat of design, develop, test, deploy, iterate, design, develop, test, deploy, iterate, and you've got to go around that circle. Now, you don't have to have an enormous team. This could be just three people, but it's three people who are focused on uh, delivery, on automation, and then on uh, user research, testing with users, making sure you're building the right thing. Hopefully, you're not burning through too many post-it notes, because there is a bit of a revolution on that at the moment. Um, one thing you've got to be wary about with Agile is that it trebles the cost of everything. I know that because I took my organization, Agile, years ago, and it trebled the cost of everything. It's cooler because you get loads of different colored post-it notes. <coughs> Read the book. Um, and then I'll get off my, my high horse now. But that strategy work is thanks to these councils who've contributed such value. You know, these war stories, these anecdotes that we've collected in a document, you're all going to get a copy of it today. Uh, we've literally hot off the press, really. I think we got it delivered yesterday. Um, so <laughs> it's probably still got the odd typo in. Um, we only printed 100 copies. So, uh, But uh, take it, read it, give it to your chief executive. There's stories in there from other local authorities about how, you know, what the heroics are going on inside different organizations and building different things. There's one more thing I've got to tell you before I let you all go. And it's our intention to build a new forms product that is going to be entirely software service, pure cloud-based, it's going to be the next generation of forms. XFP, now it's Jardu Central, uh, was built. You had hair. Um, <laughs> it was built um, almost 15, well, 16 years ago, probably a bit longer than that, actually, before we actually sold the first copy of it. 
and you know it was built for a different generation and now we're really focused on so you've got a big enterprise very mature very highly secure data management product in xfp and now we need something lightweight super fast that you can just embed you can deploy you can drag and drop you can see your business process and you can just get out the door we also want it to work offline and we want to build in you know sort of um, new tools automation tools to make it the best forms product we can. We've got collectively hundreds of years of knowledge of how to build forms products, and that's what we're going to put into this. And it's starting, the user research process has started now. We're going to continue that through the year, and then we're going to start writing code. So if anyone wants to get involved in that process, let us know. I think Swindon already involved in it, and, uh, and a few others as well. So with that, I'm going to let you all go out of that door over there. So everybody, out that door over there, and then I think our, our team are going to come in here and leave gifts for you on the table. Thank you.